All right, guys, another beautiful day, another super mod. Let's get right into it. What's going on, guys? Kevin here, back again with the Six Streets YouTube channel, climbing into the Supra to get ready to get some work done in the interior. Let me get this out of the box. Well, not box, whatever this envelope is. I'll put you guys right there. And yep, Nashman short shifter, V2.5. One of the uh, one of the parts that a lot of the OGs of the Super game really, really rave over. And to be honest, I wasn't very happy with my R154 shifter and the sloppiness of it, which many of you guys, I'm sure, know how these cars don't have the uh, the absolute most driver friendly shifters. So I thought to myself, time for an upgrade. And a lot of people had the cube, but then just as I was looking for a short shifter, these dropped and I was super intrigued to just go cop one for myself. The stock throw is very long. This throws about five and a quarter inches. So this should allow us to see a considerable reduction in how this works. And real quick, as for the Sparkos, I love them as far as their look. Uh, but I will say this ain't that good, guys. Seriously, I'm, I'm kind of done with this. Like I'll lean back and you can see I'm still pretty close. And normally how I drive, yeah, I'm, I'm very close. So with that said, these seats are up for sale as are the planted brackets and Sparkle rails. If you're interested in any of those parts, please hit me up. I really love the look of the R333s and that's the whole reason I got them. Even if people were telling me Sparkles sit high but I'm like, I'm not even five in double digits. How bad can this be? Yep, pretty bad, as you see. And before we continue with our shifter install, a lot of you guys that watch aren't subscribed, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you like what you see, and stay tuned for a lot more. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with the basics, just uh, undoing this whole assembly, which Okay, it didn't give me a hard time this time, but every time I would try to remove the shift knob, the whole thing would spin, which is why we're getting to this sooner than expected. This is all good to come off. Let me just let me get this out. There we go. Okay, what, did, what is going on here? What the hell? Okay, well, uh, that explains the problem. <laughs> it i guess the glue that was holding this together pretty much came apart and that was the end of that all right all right guys so had to take a break from doing this i do need the the Lucas red and tacky grease. One of my buddies is coming through later at night with it so I can use it to get the install done properly. Um, but yeah, just to walk you guys through a couple things, you do need this spring and this little uh, spring pivot washer from the uh, stock shifter assembly. The rest of it you don't really need. I'm just gonna wait for the grease and uh, then we are good to go to continue working on the shifter tonight. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do, two things, going to try to get Real Dash working because Torque Pro does not let us see oil pressure, so I downloaded Real Dash to see if uh, maybe we can get that to work. And uh, also going to drill the hole for the uh, rolling anti-lag switch. I've been driving around like this for a while and I just kind of forget to do it. All right, so we got our drill here. Thank God we have a quick release wheel, so I can actually just mark where exactly we want this to be drilled. So now we just finish them out here. And we're good. Not the cleanest, but we're not gonna see that anyway in the car. All right, that came out a little rough around the edges, but I think the bolt is gonna cover it. Hop in and see how this fits. This better be good. All right, and that covers the hole. All right, our switch is in. The holes look fine. Awesome. There we go. Any lag switch installed. 
pretty comfortable position. We have good room for the fingers to move around and when I'm ready to hit it, we got it right there. Pretty happy with the result. Probably could have done it a little bit cleaner. Honestly, not too bad. Day two of the shifter install and I know this looks like a lot more than a shifter install right now because it kind of is. We used a lot of today for uh, running some speaker wires as you see here uh, to run our five channel amplifier, which I do have it in the trunk. We just have everything presented, ready to hook it up. Um, we'll probably finish it up a different day, but now I just want to get the shifter in so the car can roll around in the meantime We realized there were some components missing to getting all this done today So I'm gonna go ahead and finish what I initially started being the shifter and uh, Partially put this thing back together to at least roll around. All right So we got the grease that I mentioned yesterday from a boy. So we're ready to go um, as far as proceeding with the instructions from uh, Nashman on how to assemble this thing. They say disassemble the lower shifter. Uh, well, not lower shifter, but the lower post of the shifter. So right here, these two eight mils is what they're talking about. I'm really curious to see what the adjustments are gonna look like on this thing. These pieces are so small, you gotta be really careful. I actually really do not recommend doing it the way I'm doing it with so many things going on at the same time. But this car's had pretty much an interior revamp going on. Spring, pivot washer, plate, will it fit? Seems to be fine. Okay, so the grease wasn't actually for the bottom bushing, although it is on there, whatever. Um, we need the light coat for this green bushing inside the shifter seat we also got to add the grease to the pins of that shifter seat didn't really notice but yep take a little more okay guys just want to point out when you're installing the shifter um your stock hardware is not what you're going to use it is the stock uh, thread pitch and all that but they actually supply you the taller nuts and bolts for you to be able to put this in just fine without a problem. I thought I was gonna have to run to the store and get some, but then I read the instructions a little further and saw that this is here. Make sure to clean this real nice. I'm gonna go ahead and use RTV since that's what I got. Place it with the pins exactly above where they should be. All right, so I cannot find my 10 millimeter socket somehow. That went somewhere, so I'll check torque later if uh, needed. Okay, the rubber shift cap, followed by the second boot. Um, my car never had a second boot. Not too sure how we go about this now. You're not supposed to use this for some reason. I don't have the uh, the little rubber boot. I just went ahead and loosened these two right here to uh, be able to adjust this to my liking. I'd say about as tall as possible is the best way to go. In my case, I think right around here. And we'll adjust from there. And you can also see that you can pivot the shifter also to your liking, which is really cool. Spin this around. The shifter's got a lot of customization, which I really like, but it's unfortunate that we just had uh, that mishap with uh, the boot. That's the only downside so far installing it. I believe I'm gonna have to get rid of this boot here, unfortunately. All right, guys, so we got the shifter where I want it to start. I'm using a pretty basic position. All right, guys, after a long search and cleanup, I found my shift knob. Now, because I don't have the boots that this, the instructions said I should have had, we're going to run this little boot, even if it's said to discard it, simply because we have absolutely nothing for it. Um, leaving the passenger seat out because I do want to return to stock. The way this shifts is just beautiful compared to stock. Like, I, I really like it. So, a lot more hassle than a cube shifter, that's for sure. But do I like the end result? So far, most definitely. I'll give you my first drive impressions in a bit and let's put this thing back on because like I said I don't have the other two boots I don't know if it's something factory or something that didn't come in my package so we're actually running this thing even if they said not to is it impacting shifting not really 
okay let's let's run it hope for the best and this will keep some heat out of the car i guess and also not just give me a gaping hole through the transmission tunnel all right guys first drive with the nashman shifter we uh don't have the best music experience for this as um i'm missing the rear speakers because we were running the wires and we're missing some connectors so we weren't able to put them in um let's get our app going head out to get some e85 and real dash so far really liking it um it is actually much better than what um torque pro was i'm liking it more but i do have to figure out how to get my oil pressure on here that's the main thing i, I picked it up for and i can't really figure that out at the moment The second gear shift is very different. Gonna have to get used to that for sure. And we still don't have real dash working. I think I'm just gonna ditch everything. And after I get E85, be done. And uh, just set it up then. Cause this ain't working like this. Second gear is so tight, I almost missed that. Well not almost, I did miss it. Oh my god, third feels like first. Fourth gear feels awesome. Way faster. I wonder if I can downshift it properly. Okay, I can. It just feels very strange to start. Second and third is still super weird. Man, so much better. Even with these seats that I'm not comfortable with the seat height or anything. I actually feel okay in them now. The downshifts feel crisp. Honestly, not too bad. I really do like it so far. really like this thing man i like it i just gotta get used to the first to second and the third to second downshift that's the main key after that this thing is great honestly like it okay honest review it is a bit more of a hassle to put in than if you were to pick up a cube shifter or any other ebay choice that you would that you could possibly get it is a lot more of a hassle but my god is it worth it i don't think i could have bought anything that shifted better than this i really don't think so Traffic slows down for cops on the other side, I swear to God. Like, my only complaint really is that I just haven't figured out what to do for the tranny tunnel. Because I'm getting a lot of heat through it now that I have absolutely nothing here. Although to be honest, what I had before wasn't doing much. So I don't have uh, the biggest issue with it either. Overall, I just need uh, to figure out what's going on here and what I'm missing to make this work. Wow, fourth fuel. So, oh my God, dude. This like puts the joy in driving manual in this car, dude. It makes it feel like a gated manual. Freaking nuts, man. So overall, am I happy with it? Yes, let's try that third to second. Okay, it's just not as far over to get it working. with it man wow no i figure out the boot and i'm a happy man for real i can only imagine how much better this is gonna get when i get the seat height right in other words when i go back to stock because 
this I'm okay with, but you guys can probably tell from the video, uh, I'm sitting very high, so it ain't that great. Uh, one issue I'm having with the shifter, although this is probably because I'm missing the two boots that the instructions mentioned, is it gets very hot after a long drive on the highway. Like, the shifter, well, not so hot to the touch that you cannot drive it, but it is uh, really hot, especially for the nighttime. Uh, I definitely need this resolved before I continue driving it, especially in the day. In the day, I'm sure this will become unbearable. So, um, that's complaint number one with the shifter, but that probably still has a remedy. So don't take my word for it, of it being a, a flaw of the product that you cannot fix whatsoever. Um, honestly, it shifts pretty much like stock, but like it's about stock softness, a little bit stiffer, but um, obviously the much shorter throw, which is extremely nice. Once you get used to it, you really enjoy it. Every shift is just so satisfying. I can't describe it. It's Hey guys, new day. We are revisiting the Nashman shifter install. There are a couple of things that did cause some confusion for me when installing the part, and I've gotten them sorted out. Gonna show you guys what's going on so that we get everything right as to the install. So, I'm holding a 10 ratchet in my hand. This is for the simple fact that, um, oh, let me grab the instructions so you guys understand what happened in my case. Okay, so. Apologies for how wrinkled up this is. You're not gonna be able to see it all that well. You'll notice that in this part, it says to remove the metal ring from the outer boot, the boot with the bigger opening, AKA this one. Remove it and discard the boot. That's not really uh, true. It's more like put it aside. Cause as you read further, all these instructions, you actually have to do the reverse order to reinstall your shifter surround and then just enjoy the car like that. So yes, you do use this. Now, you just, after you figure out your shifter position, cause that's what that's encouraging you to do, um, just remove your part and then add uh, the surround again. That's all it is. But yeah, just a bit of a convoluted way of explaining it. Um, so that's what we're gonna do now. I didn't have this boot originally, which is why all the heat was transferring straight from the shifter all the way up to the shift knob which made uh driving the car pretty damn annoying um so this is uh remedying that issue and hopefully this will remedy uh some of the other heat issues we're having and also the noise that we're getting because we do hear a lot of the exhaust just coming right through the tunnel all right so just to show you guys what the shifter looks like after installing the boot Mine doesn't quite look like everybody else's, so I'm not even sure if I'm following the right train of thought, but this definitely has to be better than having the open gap I did underneath this. So I'm thinking this is an improvement. I hope this is correct, or at least better than what I had before. Um, but yeah, this is it.